So we're joined by David Artinian and his lovely wife, Nam, this evening. They've been in the gemstone business for about 20 years. Is that right, David? It is, yes. Very yeah. short time. And David's going to start by telling us um, about Myanmar specifically and the trips that he has taken there. So if you'd like to take it away, David, I'll, I'll start with just some general questions about yeah. Myanmar after you greet everyone. Sure, sure. Well, thank you, Margaret. I appreciate that, that generous introduction. Um, we're sitting here in San Diego, and um, one of the things about COVID that the only thing, I guess, that's made me happy is that I've got my wife back. <laughs> because I would spend most of my life traveling, uh, going and doing in-store gem shows where I come in and fill the store up with, you know, a thousand gems and we do a gem party. But since COVID, we haven't been able to do that. And, and so we came up with this idea. It was like, everybody can be at home. Everybody can just enjoy their life at home and we'll do a gem party. So uh, my wife, Nong, and I, um, we run the business together and we have a team as my brother-in-law, his wife, and her older brother are our gem cutters. And they are world-class, like Margaret said. They do the most beautiful gem cutting, and you're going to see it here in a minute. But I just want to thank you for being here. Now, if we, we want you to, this is not a webinar, so we want you to be interacting. There's the chat box there. And, you know, just chat away in there and ask questions and make comments. Now, if it gets loud in the background or if the phone rings or the dog barks or stuff, just mute yourself. And then when you want to talk, unmute yourself again, because we, we want to hear from you. This is, this is all about having fun together. Um, and you know, that's just the way Nong and I are with business anyway. It's like our, our clients are our friends. And so we want, we want to be your friends too. So we're going to take it away. And, and I'm going to, first of all, show you a couple gems from the country that we are going to go to here in a minute. I recently went to uh, Myanmar. And in Myanmar, is, is the old name for Myanmar is Burma. And one of the famous things about Myanmar is the world's most famous place in, for, for spinels and rubies. And you can see on the turntable, this is all one type of gem. Isn't that amazing? This is a gem called spinel. It's August Burstone along with Peridot. And you can see all the different colors. It comes in red, which is the most famous uh, color of spinel. In fact, many crown jewels around the world, they thought they were rubies, but when they developed the equipment able to test for gems, they found out they were red spinel. In fact, the big black princess ruby in the crown jewels of England turned out to be this massive, they thought it was a ruby. They got it like in 1300 and something from a Moorish, Moorish king for fighting a battle with them to defeat their enemies. But th they put it in the crown jewels, they thought it was a ruby, but it turned out to be a spinel. And so it's a very famous ancient gem. You can see the gray ones there. Um, that gray color has become really popular. There's a purple one that just came around, a matched pair. Now, any gem in a matched pair is really hard to, um, to get because every crystal is a separate gem. They don't just take one and cut it in half and make earrings out of it. Each, they have to find different crystals in the ground. So, and so there's an example of some spinel. Uh, I'm going to show you some ruby after we go on a little trip so does anybody have any questions before we go to myanmar um, i do i wanted to put my terry gross hat on and just ask you some basic questions oh, about please myanmar please before please. you started um so so help us out uh with geography here where where's myanmar exactly doesn't it share a border with china well at myanmar shares the northern border with china it shares an eastern border with Thailand. It shares a western border with Bangladesh and India. Is so, it a peninsula? And it, it shares a, a long ocean. Um, okay. Okay. So that, that. Sorry, go ahead. That's fine. Oh, I was going to ask you what the climate's like. Is it tropical? In the south, it's wicked hot and muggy and it rains and you're just, your body just turns into a mush. Now, <laughs> in the central district, it can be dry. In fact, when, you, we're, when we're driving from uh, Yangon, which is the capital city up to the north, you end up going through lots of very dry, arid areas. And, and then there are parts that are desert. 
Oh. But, but then they have a higher elevation. Today we're going to be going into the high elevation of the Mogo area. It's so cold that David had never been cold in his life. <laughs> You're wearing a jacket in the morning, but it goes up to 70 degrees during the day. And then you are wearing a jacket at night and everybody's running around wearing wearing hats. wearing hats like covered up. <laughs> <laughs> wow but they have like the southern um border to the indian ocean yeah then you get tropical roasting hot so it's very it's very quite a varied uh um climate okay interesting well, they don't oh, have heat or that. david may i ask you a question go ahead yeah, you well, yeah, just uh, before you move on, David, with that, could you tell me when, um, is uh, Myanmar still relatively forested? I, I recently read a book of exploration through there from early in the 20th century. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing to read the descriptions of the ancient forests mm -hmm. there with canopies 150, 200 feet high, the nature of the, I was just wondering, is it something where they're, they are custodians now of the of their green spaces and all that, or or has a lot been deforested? Well, what is your overall impression of the topography? Well, um, the flat central plains are they are not heavily forested. They may have been uh, you know five hundred or thousand years ago. Uh, mm -hmm. The mountainous area is heavily forested. In fact, we're going to go through. Uh, you're going to see the canopies and the beautiful forests in some of the pictures. But it's mm. still it's still quite I mean it was like North Korea as far as being an, having an oppressive oppressive regime, and so the people are not as jaded. It's become a freer country now, um, since you know it was colonized by the British, and then after the Second World War they got their freedom, and that's where Aung San Suu Kyi's mm -hmm. father became famous for for helping gain independence. Uh, but then the Aung San Suu Kyi the you know the, the lady who's famous for fighting against the oppressors, the uh, the junta, the military regime. Uh, she she was under house arrest for long, but anyway, the country is opened up. So if you want to go there, you're welcome to <laughs> go there. And see, it's beautiful. Yeah, it was closed country for a long time, so they never quite developed, especially yeah. regarding to the trees and forest. Of course, I'm from Thailand, so we fight each other all the time, back oh. <laughs> in Chin Sam. Yeah. So, but yeah, um, during the colonial, the British harvest a lot of tea from that region to take it to England to build a lot of and all that. But now, um, but now it's, they're not so much harvesting, it's more local. Uh, and so, yes, it's been more preserved. So did the name change from Burma to Myanmar? Did that come when the regime was overthrown? Right. It came when well, it came when uh, the British were were uh, left. Myanmar. They changed to Myanmar. They got to name their own country. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, any other questions? So I'm, I'm getting quite a bit of background noise, so I'm going to mute everybody and then just unmute you, Mark. And then, and then what you can do, though, is you can um, unmute yourself as you would like to talk. So um, anyway, Margaret, if you could unmute yourself and Victoria, anybody else. So just please uh, unmute yourself as you would like to talk. And then let's go on a let's go on a trip. Bear with me for a second. I, oh, I'm figuring out this regarding the sharing of my screen. So what I'm going to do is take you on a little trip and there's going to be a mix of videos and photos. So here we go. Hi, this is David Artinian with Artinian Gems and I'm in one of the, the main markets in, um, in Myanmar. In, this is in Yangon, the largest city in Myanmar. And this is actually an old market that dates back to colonial times. Back in the 1920s, they built this market it was built for colonial products to come in from outside of the country. And they would come in, they'd sell their, their wares. Well, obviously the colonial days are over, and this is actually a market for all kinds of products. Now, um, over the years, gradually gemstones began to come here from different mining areas in Myanmar. And this, while well, this market sells um, all kinds of arts and crafts, it sells jewelry, they sell uh, all kinds of carvings, that kind of thing. They sell clothing, all kinds of upholsteries and, 
so many different things in this market. But I came to this market because gems come from all over the country and I bought, uh, in this market, I bought some rubies, I bought some spinels, I bought some peridot, and a couple other gems. So you can see right there in the background, but I start to see all those guys sitting on the chairs. They're sitting around drinking tea and they're gem dealers. So they've gotten all these gems from the mountains and from the, uh, the gem mining areas and they've come here and they trade rough. So sometimes I'll sit there and I'll buy from these guys and then, and then I'll go inside the structure that they have. See the building there? They've got restaurants in there and all kinds of other stuff. And I will um, buy from, from those guys in there. Now in the morning, everybody gets up super early. And um, so I got up early with everybody. We go into the Central Park. The bars, the bars are here. Blocks from my so people hotel. exercise early in the morning. Yeah, everybody's exercising. Over here, there's some older people. Over here, people. Exercise. Low impact. And here we are on a bus ride. You can see we're angry. <laughs> this is an eight hour bus ride from, uh, from the capital city up to uh, Mandalay. And there's my traveling partner. His name is Aaron. He runs, a, he has a nonprofit. Uh, we're on the border of Thailand and Burma taking care of refugees. He's an amazing, amazing friend. Anyway, we decided we better drink some energy drinks because we were in such a bad mood. And then, uh, you know, right away after that, you can see how we felt. There we are. <laughs> That's how we were after any Anyway, then we stopped. And um, uh, the bus stops every now and again. Every few hours, the bus will stop. And then here, here is one of the local bus, uh, you know, rest stops. We're getting steamed um, nuts. Get a bag. Okay, this is Tintin. Now I put her in there because she was one of our traveling partners. She's a translator. She's a she's a Burmese, but she's from one of the hill tribes. She's from the she's a Gurian hill tribe person, and they they were heavily um, heavily persecuted by the Burmese government during that time of of oppression and. And her and her family, sometimes they would, they would have to walk for days through the jungle and hide uh, so they didn't get killed by the troops. And she eventually escaped through to Thailand and she um, helps my friend Aaron with their nonprofit, helping to rescue families, helping to establish them, helping people with you know the basic things that we think in life that we understand like hygiene, how to raise your kids, and all, you know how not to fight with each other and beat each other up, but just that kind of stuff. Anyway, she's a, she was a great help. Now here we are in Mandalay with a group. This couple here is um, there are our close friends there. Uh, he they they're gem dealers and they're from this Mogok area. Uh, we're go, they're taking us to their hometown, which happens to also be where the the center for ruby and sapphire is. And there's a, there's our dinner. Ooh. That's a trick. Here we go. Exercising. I like the exercise. We are drinking Mandalay. Everybody can around. And then that's the city walls are the last kingdom of Burma before the British took over in the 18th. Can't really see it very well. But and this is a moat around the castle. The castle. Now we're on our way from uh, Mandalay, which is the central north city, up to the mountains. You can see that this road is this country under development. The roads are packed and jammed, and a lot of trucks. This is the main artery from China as well, bringing stuff from China because we get a lot of their one good thing from China, a lot of their supplies, and all the petroleum travels. We happen to be at a season when young men during their holidays are become monks for a, a few days. There's a procession up ahead where they where they uh, are checked out and uh, horse drawn carriages, and they um, just part of their. You can see right there. That's one of the heavily decked out um, traditional. Buddhist Ceremonies. Beautiful. Yeah, isn't it beautiful? And 
there's more, and there's, you know, there's a mix. <laughs> Hi, this is David Artini with Artini and Jeff. Okay, so right here we're at the border of uh, Mogo, which is where, where, where we're going to where all the gems are. This is a restricted area. It says this region is restricted area. Do, so not allowed to go any foreigners without permission. <laughs> oh. So I had to get special permission. Today we are at the brink of probably one of my most important gem hunting trips of the year. We are going to the Mogo area, the most famous place in Burma for ruby. Now this is the world's leading source of the Burmese ruby, the most beautiful ruby that the world has ever produced. And so we had to stop here because foreigners are not allowed to go into this area. Uh, I had to get special permission from the government. It took about a week to get the, the uh, permission. Uh, we got the permission and now we're heading up this mountain. It's going to be about another four hours of windy roads and we'll be there and we're going to report there. But I want to share something with you. My next video is going to have something very exciting in it. I'm going to share with you the story of the Burmese ruby, where it came from, the origin that goes back many, many hundreds of years. So, so there we are. Okay, now there's the canopy. You can see in the distance, um, th those are the forested areas, and this is a windy road. It's about a five hour drive. You can see how beautiful it is. They do a That's lot of agriculture. Orange. I'm here at the Mountaintop Mall, and we are looking at some fruit and there's some vegetables and they and put food here yes some honey and they got honey over here yes so i mean we are on our way to the gem hunt uh and as we climb the mountains things get more and more interesting more and more remote it's a really fantastic area <laughs> nice yeah, we got... look at honey uh-huh we got honey. Are you still videotaping? Yeah. yeah we've got look at that honey i love the bottle too that's it that's it <laughs> and what is love that bottle <laughs> Anyway, speaking of trees, look at that tree. That's hundreds of years old. This is a village that we're passing through on the way to Mogo. You can see this is high in the mountains. It's very remote. And you can see way in the distance there, there is um, a scarred area on the mountain. And it's a different color. It's kind of a brownish color. Well, that is a ruby mine in the Mogo area. We're Mogok. Welcome to Mogok. Welcome to Mogok. Now go. Welcome to Mogok. We are now in Ruby Land. We are at the very west end of Mogok. And from here on out, we're going to head down into the valley. We're actually at a very high spot in elevation. And we're in the middle of a pine forest, which is quite amazing for the jungles of, of Southeast Asia. So anyway, we're going to head on to Ruby Land. We'll see you soon. This is, um, this is a temple that was right next to our hotel. And so um, it's an old temple up, up at the top there. You can see the rails at the top and you get to see the whole town from up there. But every morning I'd get up there and run up those stairs just to get some exercise. Uh, um, Dipti, is, Dipti is wondering, um, and I am too, why is the Mogok area so restricted? Uh, they, they don't, I mean, it's a restricted country. Um, and they are, you know, in the past the government was doing a lot of bad stuff. They don't want people seeing what they're doing. Uh, but now they're trying to protect their resources. They don't want the Chinese coming in and in mass um, because that's an issue. I mean, they're they're right under the they're just you know China's breathing down their necks, uh, and they're a resource-rich country, and they also were colonized, so they're not excited about um, giving away their all their stuff to the foreign countries now. But here we are at a mine. I'm looking at. I'm looking, I'm sitting down there with the miners. What they do is they've been digging up the gems from down below and they're, um, you know, they're sorting through the gem material. This is a, an area where they bring the material up and they're washing. So they're washing the dirt that's been brought up. What they've been doing is they've been dynamiting down deep and then they bring up the, the uh, rock and then they're washing it to, to sift for the gem bearing gravel. Now this is all secondary deposit, meaning it's not hard rock mining. And so uh, what it looks like is they've been following this little creek, this ancient creek, and they've been uh, digging all around it and to find uh, where the ruby material is. But sometimes they find high quality here, uh, but generally you have to go deeper for the high quality. Some of those holes go down a thousand feet. 
here's a lady there they were sifting through and I was looking at some rough stones that that they had uh, found um, they're very much family outfits of the mom and the dad and the check this out this hard-working young woman she's got a baby she's working no whining here look at this no whining. I am totally Very impressed totally. <laughs> and then we went to get some noodles at the noodle shop here so it's lunchtime and time to get some noodles at the noodle shop oh, I love that fire. isn't this absolutely awesome they were posing they're like embarrassed <laughs> And anyway, this one here is called the Million Billion Trillion Mine. And you can imagine uh, why it might be called Million Billion Trillion. It was one of the most prolific uh, ruby mines uh, in the area. A couple months before I was there, somebody found a rough piece of ruby that they sold for $3 million. And so they're, they're mining, they're going deep down in there and they're mining. And uh, this happened to be a Buddhist holiday, so it was quiet. Um, and so we had a chance to kind of walk through and see what the mining operations are like. It's very much families there, moms and kids. So they prepared uh, four sticks of dynamite here, and they're going to get ready to send them down. Yeah. In the wax, the waterproof, and wire, wire, electric. Yeah. Hey, David, tell me what's happening. So what they're doing is they're sorting the, the gravel that they just brought up. And what they do is they, they get the, the, the big stuff off, and then they, they um, wash it, then they flip it over. And the ruby has come to the center and it's sunk to the bottom. And so when they flip it over, the ruby material will be right on top. Watch this. Ruby, and they're gonna look right in here so they'll find the ruby. Ah, look. Look at that. Patanya. 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 And this is the town. You can see how mountainous it is. There we are. The night market. What is it? And then, of course, no trip is, is, would be complete without its tourist photo. This is down by the lake. And uh, there we are. Any, any thoughts or any questions? So is the mining all, um, all done by hand? There's no big like earth movers or big... Um... Right, right. There's no, there's no earth movers. Um, there's nothing like that. It's all hand dug. They'll use like a um, compressor, a hand compressor, like the jackhammer thing. Mm -hmm. So that is the trip, a quick trip to Burma. And the gems on the turntable from that area. Very cool.